when we're talking about rotations in either a one quadrant or a four quadrant grid, we would do things differently in a digital world than we are going to do them in the classroom. In the classroom or at home, if you were rotating a shape on paper, what I would suggest would be to trace the shape, cut it out and actually physically rotate it. However, when we're doing things digitally, we can use a little bit of an almost a cheat or a hack. When we click on the shape, you'll see you, you get the squares at the corners as you've always gotten. And you know that you can use these to stretch the image or to change it slightly. However, you also get what you might not have noticed, which is this tiny little button up here, which allows you to rotate the shape. When I click on it, you'll see that I get black numbers right there. That tells me the degrees of rotation. So if I want to rotate this shape 90 degrees clockwise, well, I know that the clock moves to the right. So I'm gonna turn my shape to the right. And if you'll notice my, my rotation degrees change as I turn my shape. So I can actually see what it's perfect. So right now it's at 90 degrees and I know I turned it to the right, so that's clockwise. And so I've got a 90 degree clockwise turn. I can do the same if I want a 180 degrees clockwise turn. And look, it will tell me if I'm not far enough or if I've gone way past. The other thing you might notice is that if I am not perfectly on 180 degrees or 90 degrees, the image of the shape, the black line outline of the shape is slightly blurry. So when I get right to 180 degrees, those lines all line up perfectly and it should look nice and clear. Now I'm gonna go back actually and put it original. Now, if I wanted to do a 180 degree, sorry, a 90 degree counterclockwise turn. Well, I know clockwise was to the right, so counterclockwise must be to the left. I'm gonna turn it. You'll notice that I don't start at zero degrees here. And if you're not already certain why, it's because that this is measuring the degrees in a circle and there are 360 degrees in a circle. So I have to actually know what is 360 degrees subtract 100, or sorry, subtract 90. And that will give me how much I should turn. And I happen to know that it is right at 270. So if I turn it to the left, it should measure 270. If I'm going for 180 degree clockwise turn, you'll notice it actually does line up right with 180 and that's because that's halfway. So it's halfway whether I'm going 90, whether I'm going clockwise or halfway whether I'm going counterclockwise. So that's a nice little hack you can use to measure the degrees precisely as you're turning your shapes.